Welcome to McGraw-Hill Education's webinar highlighting adaptive learning and AP testing success using scoreboard. Your panelists today are Tim Reed, Senior Curriculum Specialist, and Chuck Tilly, AP teacher at Chautauqua Central High School in New York uh, State. To uh, set the stage today, I just wanted to read um, information from the College Board. Over the past decade, the number of students who graduate from high school having taken rigorous AP courses has nearly doubled. And research shows that students who succeed in rigorous coursework, such as advanced placement of developing college-level knowledge and skills while still in high school, these students are more likely than their peers to earn college degrees on time and save substantial money over time. The increase in the number of students taking AP courses also increases the number of students who may not have the study skills to pass the AP exam. Some statistics show that 40% of AP students do not pass the AP exam, and another 20% do not even take the exam. So is adaptive learning the key to AP testing success? Uh, let's just look uh, at a, a simple definition of adaptive learning. Computers adapt the presentation of educational material according to students' learning needs, as indicated by their responses to questions and tasks. The motivation is to allow electronic education to incorporate the value of the interactivity afforded to a student by an actual human teacher or tutor. So adaptive learning has been partially driven by the realization that tailored learning cannot be achieved on a large scale using traditional non-adaptive approaches. Teachers are an irreplaceable asset because they possess very high-level teaching and complex engagement abilities. If adaptive learning technologies could take over some of that lower-level techniques, we could maximize teachers' time spent on the most valuable aspects of human-to-human -human learning. The studies have been and are being done to discover the efficacy of adaptive learning, and the preliminary results are very encouraging. Chuck is here to share with you his story of historic gains with his AP US history program. Um, and we will go through a demonstration of uh, an adaptive learning uh, AP testing program called Scoreboard and uh, look at the components of how that is helping to be a key to AP testing success. So let's look at a little background here. And Chuck, by the way, thank you very much for being with us today to share with the audience your student success last year in your AP U.S. History course. Oh, it's my pleasure. So um, the school is at Chautauqua Central High School. You're located east of Buffalo, is that correct? That's correct. The pronunciation is Cheektowaga. Cheektowaga. You know, and I should know that because I was in there helping you to implement this program. Um, and uh, the enrollment, 912, is 748. That's correct. And 51% economically disadvantaged. That's also in, correct. In uh, the years 2012 and 2013. So you had a great opportunity. It sounds like you um, actually uh, put in a grant. You independently sought and obtained a grant for new laptops. No, I was, actually part, hold, I was actually part of a group through BOCES of about a dozen teachers doing something called the VAP grant, which is virtual okay. AP. And I happened to do it for U.S. history, as a few other teachers did as well. And I okay. hooked up with McGraw-Hill as part of the VAP grant when I went to the ISTE conference in San Antonio last year. Excellent. So you weren't just using a Scoreboard, which is the AP testing program from McGraw-Hill Education, but you were also using the uh, course program, which is Connect, as well as the uh, uh, summer study course on board? Don't really use Onboard too much, but I use Connect every day. Okay, excellent. And so Connect is, is actually that course, and I'm going to explain that a little bit later on here, uh, that helps um, students study and uh, you have your assessment and uh, assignment system for the, uh, for the program and the text uh, as you go through the course. Uh, so I do have a question. Um, 
given the fact that you have this grant for the new laptops, how did you, your students utilize scoreboard? Did they work on it in class, at home? Um, what can you tell me about that? Well, to answer the first question, they did it both, both in class and at home. Uh, really last year, my first year with scoreboard and with the, two, the new textbook, the Brinkley uh, 14th edition textbook, it was my first year I was a rookie. And you came out and trained me on Connect, I think it was in February of last year. And right. I really got rolling with Connect. And once I felt comfortable with that, we got going with scoreboard. So last year, we didn't get onto scoreboard until probably late March. And so late March, all of April, early May before the final exam, probably seven solid weeks. So we were just scratching the surface utilizing it. And what okay. they did is they did the diagnostic first that takes about 15 to 20 minutes. And then they did the, um, the adaptive uh, content review, which could go as long as like 11 hours consecutively if you did it. But most of the kids did it for like 15, 20 minutes every single night. And a large percentage of the kids, large percentage of the kids finished between like 50 to 60 percent of this. And at first they were very resistant to it, didn't like it very much because it was new, it was different. But as time went on, more and more kids told me that they were actually getting a lot out of it and thought it was very beneficial for them when it came time for the final exam. So that was actually one of my last questions. How did, what feedback did your students have after they used the program? And so that's, uh, that's great. So uh, they turned around a little bit there. Anything, you know, we're all resistant to change, uh, but if, it's, if it can actually help you uh, help them, that's great. Oh, yeah. In the beginning, they hated the whole idea of being on the laptops, using Connect, and a few of the other things that I do, too, with my own personal Moodle. They're like, why are we doing this? Why aren't you just standing up in front of the room and lecturing, telling us what we need to know? And it's like, well, guys, we're going to do something different here and, and see how it right. works out. And the, uh, the results speak for themselves. And, and, and that's exactly where I was going next, to the results. It looks like the national average on the uh, slide here is a little over 50%, and uh, uh, your, your school's historic results a little bit above that. Uh, but then the 2013 results, uh, those are outstanding. And you actually have a com uh, comment here. Uh, the results simply blew me away. This group crushed everything we had accomplished in the past. Um, can you elaborate a little bit on what made this group special, uh, given uh, you know these results, and uh, uh, give them some back, give the audience some background uh, knowledge of the group of students that you had? Sure, sure. Um, going into this exam, I was very fearful that we were going to have terrible results because we really opened up our enrollment for AP. Uh, traditionally, I would have two sections of kids, about 15 in each section, 30 total, and I'd have about 25 kids who would take the test, about 20 who would pass it, about 12 who would get college credit, and maybe two or three of those kids would get four and fives. But we're trying to beef up our AP program. We're trying to get more kids involved. So we're pretty much pushing kids in who are just decent, good kids, who had decent averages in 10th grade and 9th grade. So this past year, I had 47 kids in class, uh, two sections of they added up to 47. And the grant paid for everybody's exam, so all 47 kids took the exam. Now, of those 47 kids, probably 30 were what I would consider to be your traditional AP kid. The other 17 were just good kids who were willing to give it a try, and if they had to pay for the exam, they probably wouldn't have. So they all took the exam. Out of the 47 that took it, 46 passed it, meaning they got a two or better. 32 wow. got college credit. And then 20 of them got a four or better. So, and this was a group Excellent. who really, I was fearful that my results were going to be the worst I ever had, and the results ended up being the best I ever had. And I, I think scoreboard helped. Excellent. And we're going to look at the uh, program, but I do want to encourage the audience to um, ask a question if they have any uh, of Chuck and or about scoreboard as we go through today. Um, you just, uh, I believe I have on the screen here uh, where you can expand the question line um, in your side column and uh, type in your question and we'll review those questions. I'll try to review those, field those, and or answer those questions as they come up uh, at the time or um, at the end of the session. And so um, we've talked around um, the adaptive learning product uh, so far today. Uh, which is scoreboard. Uh, let's see um, now how this tool can better equip students for AP testing success with adaptive learning. 
So scoreboard is the first advanced placement exam preparation solution that truly adapts to each student's learning needs. It delivers a personalized learning plan to ensure student comprehension as they prepare in the weeks and the months leading up to the exam uh, and helping them study smarter, not harder. Um, it, it is a digital platform uh, and it's intuitive for the students and the teachers once we get past their resistance. Uh, so, Chuck, at what point, you said that you introduced the course in um, April, was that correct? I introduced Scoreboard to them in April, yes. That's um, what I meant, oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. And um, it took them a few weeks. Like, a lot of them were looking at it, and it was very daunting because they saw how large it was after they finished the diagnostic. That it, you know, it said there were, like, right. 500 questions, and it could take them 11 hours. And, you know, it gives you a learning pacing plan where it says, okay, you should work 20 minutes a night or 30 minutes a night. So we started kind of late in the game. And what, that's one of the things I did differently this year is actually today was the day we started scoreboard. We got logged on yesterday. They created their accounts yesterday. And today my class actually did their diagnostic. So that's the change yeah. I'm making this year is we're starting a little bit earlier. Uh, that was my question. Would you alter the timing with what you know now? And yeah, I'm so still a rookie, start, so I'm, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. You're just giving them the extra time there. Then they can actually go in. They can adapt their, um, their study time to match their busy schedule. Yeah, basically what I'm trying to tell the kids is if you just spend 10, maybe 15 minutes a night, and answer a half a dozen questions, you're probably going to finish this with time to spare, and you're going to be a lot less stressed. And part of what we're doing with AP is we're trying to teach the kids good study, study habits, and we're trying to teach them time management. And I really think that scoreboard helps them do that. Excellent. Well, let's take a look. Um, so um, we, we talked about the fact that you have all three of the AP Advantage Suite programs, um, and so uh, we did talk briefly on board is that uh, self-paced uh, study tool for the skills and strategies before you actually begin the course, so summer work. Um, then Connect is um, that assignment and assessment system that includes um, not only the regular interactive ebook, but also an adaptive study ebook uh, that's pre-highlighted uh, for a more focused study, uh, and that utilizes adaptive technology for the course as you're going through the course. So that would be used from September until uh, the end of the course. And then scoreboard. Um, scoreboard is, oh, I went too far there. Um, scoreboard um, does use adaptive technology, and it's an interactive study tool that assesses students' skill and knowledge levels to track which topics the students have mastered and which require further instruction and practice. So based upon the student progress, it then adjusts the learning content based on their knowledge strengths and weaknesses, as well as, and I'm going to get to this later, as well as their confidence level around their answers. And so do they know it or do they not know the question? This comes into play in their future success. So um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, scoreboard is online. It also includes a diagnostic component uh, for AP practice exams, and the new U.S. Uh, history uh, program that actually includes uh, additional practice exams uh, based on the, um, uh, the new um, uh, course design. And Scoreboard also has uh, a comprehensive reporting option as well, so a personalized learning plan for full-length practice exams, comprehensive reporting for both the student as well as the teacher. Now, you alluded to this, Chuck, that the students take a, a diagnostic exam and it tells them that they need to study so many days. This is an example uh, here on the screen of how many days a week um, I needed to study uh, when I took my diagnostic exam, uh, four days a week for 40 minutes per day. Um, and then after they take this exam, it gives them a personalized learning plan or an individualized learning plan uh, so that they can prepare um, leading up to the exam. And uh, at this point in time, I want to go live and uh, just go straight into the teacher view. And so all three of these programs 
are on the same platform. Very easy to set up your sections and the students place themselves in the sections uh, for the exact period uh, that they are um, you know, taking the course. So I'm going to click on my section, the scoreboard, and this is the home screen where I have tabs across the top. The performance is, of course, where I can find my re reports after the students have uh, taken uh, their tests, their exams, their diagnostic exams. Down the side margin, I can see at a glance section performance uh, if I have uh, students uh, that have taken um, tests and assessments. You can see in the middle here, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the personalized learning plan that I assigned to my students. I also assigned, assigned an AP practice exam. So this, that's the teacher view. If I switch over to the student view, there's, there's a much more scaled down uh, view of what they have uh, to do, what their assignments are. Now, the student would actually click on the personalized learning plan. <laughs> Excuse me. And open their program. Now, they've taken their, their um, diagnostic assessment, and now they um, uh, are going through their plan. And then whatever they've uh, studied in the past sessions, uh, that alters their plan. And uh, they have a review of questions that they have missed, um, as well as new instruction for every time that they uh, log in to this personalized learning plan. Here's your current learning status. Before you start on today's assignment, we'll ask you several questions to further adapt your learning plan. So I don't know that you could hear that um, audio, but uh, the students can listen or they can read to the instructions as they log in here. It does say that I'm running behind here. It says, notice that the semester is more than a third over, uh, and you are less than a third of the way through. So it's a suggestion that I can go in and I can change my study habits here uh, and increase my study time from four times a week to, uh, you know, uh, to uh, I think it was 20 minutes a day to, to 45 minutes a day. So I can take that into account and, um, and change my schedule down here below, or I can just continue on and try to uh, get through the course um, content. We will make a learning plan specifically for you. The learning plan will be based on your needs, what you have seen before, and how well you have done in previous sessions. Here is your plan for today. So that's really key. The new learning to get started. Again, you may not have heard that, but it, it adapts to what you're doing today, what you've done in the past. And uh, each one of these learning plans includes instruction. I can click on the triangular trade routes. And this instruction is not actually instruction that um, is written or um, narrated, but rather in this case, uh, the uh, students are directed to um, actually drag and drop information to the correct area on the map and then submit. So as you've got it, now you're ready to move on. So I continue on and I go into, in this case, there's another set of instructions. Now I'm just going to, so you can see that the instruction takes different um, approaches to reach the different learning modalities of the students. So I'm just going to continue on here, and after I am finished with this instruction, uh, periodically the students always have um, a practice uh, following instructions. So I'm going to click on the crash crop, cash crop economy once again um, and go beyond that to the practice session. And so it uh, now provides me, the student, with a variety of types of either check all that apply, drag and drop, uh, other types of questions that they, they should be familiar with. And uh, in this case, it's check all that apply. Now, this is a question that has two parts. Uh, so we might all understand why the first part of this question is important. If the students answer the question correctly, obviously they've established that they know something about the content. If the student answers the question incorrectly, they establish that they don't know the content, that the question and uh, revised questions also 
dealing with that content will be given to that student again. So this will be followed up on in the review. They'll see this question once again um, until they get it right. But now about the second part of this question, why is it important? In what ways does confidence, accuracy, identification benefit the student, whether they know it, they think they know it, they're unsure, or they have no idea? So um, if we uh, select answers here, and I'm, I'm not reading this right now, and the student thinks he knows the answers, he would uh, select um, thinks so. And so now, and I, uh, that was a, a total guess answer there, but, uh, and I'm going to get to that point. That shouldn't actually happen with this uh, unless I get really good at guessing. Um, so this adaptive learning process um, is um, extended to the second part of the question, uh, which relates the confidence students have in their answer to the actual answer to the question. So let's take a look at this. Underconfident. What's difficult, the underconfident student, what's difficult to discern is what lies beneath the bubble, of course, on the answer sheet. In current assessment models, an individual who has correctly answered the question and really knows that it's correct is indistinguishable, indistinguishable from the student who guessed correctly and arrived at the same answer by sheer luck, which is what I just did. So scoreboard is an attempt to help overcome the guesswork factor in assessment success. But now, on the other um, side of that, you have that student who is overconfident. So a student may be wrong about the answer. However, he or she strongly believes that the wrong answer, which he or she sele selected, is correct. This high level of confidence in incorrect information is referred to as confidently held misinformation. And such information leads to poor decisions and mistakes in the further application of learning. So the scoreboard takes into account not only the correct answer, but also the confidence when it gives students review questions and additional topics to master as they go through this program. Now, if they want to review the um, instruction at any point in time, they can go up to the up to the, uh, the um, library and click on one of the topics. And they can see that they have uh, uh, completed the instruction on some of the topics if they have a check mark next to the topic. If they do not have a check mark next to the topic, then they can click on that instruction and they can go through the instruction of that uh, particular topic. So that is the um, the actual program in a nutshell for the students. They, they have the instruction, they have the two-part questions, and they also have a reporting option so that they can see how they uh, are doing as they're going through. So the importance of immediate feedback uh, cannot be overstressed uh, when it comes to study habits. So. I'm going to click on reports here while I'm still in the student view. And they have access to topic scores, missed questions, self-assessment, which is that metacognition of whether they know the answer and what confidence they have. And they can generate a practice quiz as well. So here it looks like uh, the time spent on the topic of pre-Columbian to revolutionary America has been 5 minutes and 42 seconds, and my progress through that is 22%. The students can further break that down and look at the areas within that uh, major topic um, and see how long they've spent and where they have to um, focus their study in the subtopic categories. So if I look at missed questions, and maybe a student was just answering a question incorrectly um, for um, what they really knew the answer. They can certainly come back here, take a look at those questions, and select the
correct answer as well as the confidence they have in that answer. And then that question, as a missed question, goes away and it is incorporated then in the overall results. As I said, the self-assessment is whether they are aware that they knew the answer, aware that they didn't know the answer, or unaware that they, you know. So this is where we get into the confident and overconfident student. By checking the self-assessment report, they have a better idea of, of the knowledge that they have going forward. And then, as I mentioned, they can go into the practice quiz and here they can choose one of the selected chapters or one of the, to select one of the chapters and the number of questions that they want to uh, practice on. Now I'm going to go back to the um, teacher, back to connect to the teacher view. And I wanted to point out that not only is this the adaptive AP test practice for the students, but it also has an assignment generator. And so if I click on add an assignment, I can see that this is an actual test generator. It's an assignment uh, system where I can assign uh, things that, were, um, that I may use um, in my instruction for that particular AP course. Uh, the personalized learning plan I did assign to my students, took that diagnostic test and set up their personalized learning plan. The question bank is where I find my practice exams. And we also have the printable practice exams here. If I click on one of the practice exams, I have a variety of types of exams here. Um, so both the multiple choice as well as free response questions in this particular uh, scoreboard uh, topic of U.S. history. If I select the multiple choice question um, exam, now I have a test generator that really allows me to filter uh, those questions by question type, by Bloom's taxonomy, by the type of question that includes images, by theme, as well as by topic. I can select my questions randomly from the pool of questions. I can also create my questions. And once I go in to setting this test up, I have a variety of options of criteria that I can choose. Uh, do I want uh, um, accented marks uh, to be required? Do I uh, want to allow tolerances for spelling or capitalization? And other types of criteria uh, when I get into the process of, uh, of assigning this particular um, assignment. So this program, as I mentioned, is not only an adaptive study tool for the um, student, it's also a way for the teacher to monitor um, what the students are doing through assignments that they've created themselves or assignments that come directly from scoreboard. Now, the performance for the teacher, if I create an AP, AP practice exam, I uh, include my own test questions and all that, the performance would show up up here. And so I would just click on reports and I can see that I have these types of reports. Assignment results, student performance, assignment statistics, item analysis, um, category analysis, and at risk. I'm, I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint right now and, uh, and, and, and take a look at each one of those um, and what kind of a view um, I have. Um, so this is another key component to scoreboard. The comprehensive reports provide the students and the teachers with uh, in-depth insights uh, at all levels. Uh, students can view, as I mentioned here, frequently missed questions, uh, uh, self-assessment results, uh, but the teachers can go in and view the, the student reports as well. So these dynamically generated reports help to document the progress and areas for additional reinforcement um, they offer students real-time feedback on their content mastery. 
So by monitoring student progress, uh, educators have the ability to instantly evaluate the level of understanding and mastery for an entire class or an additional student at any given time. Now I'm going to go through the reports. Here's um, the overall report, just one overall report. This is just a sample. Uh, so this is your quick review. You can see down at the bottom here on this slide, I have the different types of reports. Now this is for those um, assignments that I have created, those practice AP tests, um, the assignment results give me that color-coded uh, quick identification of my uh, ranges of students, the uh, performance results, uh, item, analysis, uh, item analysis allow me to take a look at the individual questions and see how an individual student or a class is doing. Um, my category analysis uh, allows me to look at that Bloom's taxonomy and what, uh, what uh, was the result of uh, a particular questions using application or evaluation or knowledge. And then, of course, at-risk reports give me a, a snapshot of how my students are doing uh, broken down by risk. So, um, Chuck. Yes. How did you did you use these reporting tools to look across your student population and, and determine who needed your help? Well, I will be this year now that I know more about it. Um, last year, being a rookie, um, I was discovering the stuff little by little by accident. In fact, my my students probably did more to educate me on scoreboard than I did to educate them, uh, because yeah. they were the ones who were you know digging their fingers into it and actually utilizing it. And I, I would urge any teacher that's going to use this to basically log on as a student themselves and, and, and work with the material. And I think you'll learn a lot more about the product and, and be able to use it more effectively. I, I much agree with that, absolutely. So now what I've shown you, the, the um, reports here, those are, and, I, and I tried to make uh, certain that you understood, this was for those practice exams and this is for those, uh, uh, those test questions that you may have created on your own. But now if, uh, if we look at the adaptive uh, assignment reports, that personalized learning plan, um, now the teacher gets to see a little bit more than the student. Uh, so you as a teacher get to see uh, performance summaries as well as progress by topic, um, most challenging learning objectives, and you can evaluate this um, and it can really then um, allow you to assess the progress and adjust your instruction. And so here's an example of uh, performance details. And so I get to see that my student has gone in. They have studied on a particular topic. They're only 3% on the pre-Columbian to revolutionary America. Um, and they, they've only done one question there. Um, and it, it does look like if they were unaware um, I so I have this information, uh, time spent right at my fingertips to um, help the students, and I also can see in a different format that confidence level, that metacognitive skills um, information, uh, so that I can go in and perhaps uh, help turn that around uh, for the students. Now, with scoreboard, since it's it's not course specific necessarily, uh, meaning that it doesn't teach uh, a textbook, it is the content that is required uh, to know to be successful on the AP test. These are the courses that we have available currently um, for scoreboard in AP uh, Social Studies, AP Science, uh, and English Language Arts. Now, I'm going to take a look here. I have a couple more questions for you, Chuck. Okay. Um, and I did have a question here, how about AP Calculus? And uh, I see, so, okay. And AP Calculus, um, I am not sure about AP Calculus at this time. I believe there is some discussion about AP Calculus um, and I would uh, keep checking back. Certainly I'll give you some contact information here at the end. Um, another question I have is scoreboard uh, pre-created form of lessons or is this something that the educator creates and the students use? Um, and so this is uh, pre-created and it's, as I mentioned earlier, this is based on the, um, the content that is required for the students to succeed on that particular topic's AP exam. 
And um, let's see here. I'm trying to expand this. Uh, I'll come back to that question. And um, so we already covered, Chuck, um, what feedback the students gave. And, uh, and you mentioned that they were uh, a little bit resistant getting into it, but uh, at the end they felt that they, um, uh, they did uh, benefit by yeah. the use of, of the programs. Um, so what tips would you give other teachers who are looking uh, to try a solution like this? Well, they need to do a little research. You know, this webinar is one thing they definitely should do. Um, if there's any training available online, I know with Connect, I was able to go on YouTube, and there were a lot of different uh, training videos there, and I was able to get information about how to use Connect a lot better. Um, they should do that as well. Uh, but when they start doing it with their students, they should do it like they're a student as well, because just assigning it is fine, but the students start to learn much more about how to use the reports, you know, where the reports are. You know, my, started, my students started showing me, hey, Mr. Tilly, did you see this? Did you see that? I'm like, no, I didn't. I guess I better go on and, and take a better look at it. And so, like, this year I took the diagnostic today, and I'm going to be doing it along with the kids. And we're also going to be using scoreboard this year for the first time in my AP government class. Uh, so okay. it's interesting to see how it's going to work with those guys. And that's going to be coming up in a couple of weeks once, once we get that thing rolling. Uh, but they, they need to train themselves a little bit. I know you came out last year and you worked with me and another teacher back in February. That was mostly with Onboard and Connect, but we did do a little bit with Scoreboard. So that, right. that pre-training is very, very important. Yes. Well, that's a very great suggestion to do it with them. Um, and if you have a good understanding of what uh, the student sees, then you um, can certainly use it to help them. Uh, that, uh, that makes a lot of sense. So one year under your belt. Um, I think you've given us some insights. Did you have any others? Um, my main goal this year, and I've already accomplished it, was to start a little bit earlier. You know, we got started today, right. and uh, they right. did the diagnostic, and I've already uh, loaded in the, uh, the personal load, uh, learning plan for them, so they're going to start with that. There's already one practice exam there for them. So over time, you know, if they spend 10 or 15 minutes here or there on that, that's probably going to be all they're going to have to do as long as they keep at it. Exactly. Um, so I have one more question here from the audience. How many students can be on this program at one time? And uh, Chuck, did you have any problem with any of your students not being able to access the program? Um, uh, the only problem, yeah, early in the year, um, because I was granted 50 licenses. Uh, or, no, no, I was granted 45 licenses, and I actually ended up getting a couple more kids. And so I had to contact McGraw-Hill, and they had to grant me a couple more licenses so I could get those okay. kids on. But I had a okay. grand total of 47 kids last year taking it and okay. all working on it, so it wasn't a problem. I think the audience, uh, um, uh, the, the person asking this question, um, was alluding to um, wondering about whether or not uh, there would be any limits to the uh, server size. Now, this is the Internet, um, and so um, all this uh, material resides on our servers, and uh, to my knowledge, I have not heard that there is any limit to the number of students that can be on this program at the same time. No, I had no issues. I'd have all 25 students in one section being on at one time, and, and no one ever had a problem. Excellent, excellent. So my last question here is what is the price of scoreboard? And I am a content or a curriculum specialist, and I, I, I really don't deal with the prices, but I think uh, with this contact information here, um, especially down at the MHEonline.com, they do have prices at that website. And so MHE Online is um, Grotto Education Online. Um, if you have any other questions, I, I think I have another one here coming in too, which I will ask in just a moment, um, or I'll cover in just a moment. But to ask questions about today's webinar, you can email us at webinars at mheducation.com. Um, and uh, if you want to try it, uh, you can go to mheonline.com forward slash scoreboard, and you can then um, sign up for a trial or a demo um, a subscription, I believe it is, and so that you can just go in and play around with it yourself and, uh, and, and go through the things that I've looked at today. And so let me go ahead and um, let's see if I can expand this to the other questions. Um, 
Can it be used on iPads, tablets, etc.? Um, so right now we are currently in the works. We're, we're, we have a project going on uh, for the iPads and the tablets, and so we are creating uh, three different apps, one for scoreboard, one for onboard, and one for connect, uh, so that uh, the um, uh, devices uh, should be up and running, uh, and we're hoping to have that uh, finished by the end of this year. Um, and and uh, it may be even um, uh, earlier than that. And uh, does the license allow for multiple classes? Um, there is um, a subscription basis here, and so every student has a subscription. And so I'm not exactly sure I understand this question, but I think that uh, um, you can uh, establish as many classes as you want within the system. Uh, but you do need a code or a subscription for each student that uses the system. Now, I'm not sure about the smartphones. Uh, there is another question here about can it be used on the smartphones. I believe they're working on the apps not only for the uh, tablets, but also for the smartphones. I would have to um, check on that, though. That is, uh, is something that I am not sure of. Uh, will this webinar be recorded to distribute? Uh, yes. Um, uh, I am recording it, and we are recording it um, at its, um, um, uh, from the uh, developer as well. And do you know when they may have a Spanish language and culture available? That is something I do not know. Um, the um, the uh, scoreboard, the mheonline.com forward slash scoreboard is going to provide you with all of the um, courses that uh, we have uh, available and, uh, and, and as they are added, they would be added to that website. Can one license allow access to multiple classes such as biology and U.S. history? Well, again, you need the subscription for the individual product. So that would be a subscription for U.S. history and a subscription for biology. But the student would only have one username and password. They would find both their biology and their U.S. history courses in their one login. So I believe that uh, is what that person is asking. So after you um, are finished and when you log out here, uh, there will be a survey. We do encourage you. We want to make these webinars uh, both informative and useful for uh, anyone joining. Uh, and so please uh, take uh, the survey and let us know what you think. Um, and I would, um, there is one more question. I'm sorry, I was reading the question. I'm trying to multitask here. Um, also, I understand each student needs an ID, but if you purchase less license than students, does it work like a parking lot? In other words, uh, do kids log off, others can log on. No, it is, it is absolutely um, a subscription for the individual student who has uh, redeemed that particular code. So uh, there would not be um, <clears throat> the ability for um, one student to use another student's um, subscription. Well, I do appreciate your time today. Um, please take a look at Scoreboard. Try it out. Try out uh, Connect and Onboard as well. And I um, am going to um, thank you all very much for attending uh, Scoreboard. Uh, just to redefine Scoreboard, it's an AP test prep for today's student, uh, both technologically and one that fits into their busy lives. Uh, adaptive, uh, they study smarter, not harder. Thank you very much.